and the wisdom of, of preparing yourself and storing and having the ability to control that. You see, people can't control the disasters that occur, the man-made events that uh, are referred to um, in some of the uh, FEMA council to get prepared. Uh, people can't control any of that, but they can control their greatest dependency by having a supply of food. So uh, having said that, very simply, our perspective on the records that we have of people that use their credit cards and, and pay cash and do whatever they do to get themselves in a situation where they have reliable security for their family, uh, all of those records are encrypted, kept off site, and very, very secure. Uh, and we don't see that as necessary because of the federal government being hostile. We see that as just a, a, an extremely important issue of privacy. Privacy. You can't go into a bank and uh, and say to uh, the manager of the bank, hey, listen, I know John Schmelz and I want to know how much money is in, in his account. That's a personal thing. And your food being even more basic than money, being even more basic than ammunition and guns, being even more basic than just about anything else for families that are concerned about taking responsibility and, and, and fulfilling their patriotic duty to be responsible Americans and take care of themselves, that's a very private matter and it's just as secure and just as importantly done so uh, as would be your bank account or anything else that you have. Well, that's Steve, very, very I mean, uh, what does this tell us, though? Because we know that police departments, state departments, they've been hoarding food for years now. The fact that they are wanting to know this. Why do you think they're going door to door in Tennessee? Why are they focusing on Tennessee? Is Tennessee a a beta test? I mean, what's your gut on that? Well, my 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 gut is that uh, yes, it can possibly be. Um, it hey, I love that ringer. A... That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and start over. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> my gut feel on the Tennessee issue is that um, there are elements within uh, the the federal organization that that are are interested in tracking and finding out what's going on with the folks. You can look at it from a positive standpoint and say. Well, gee whiz. Now, I know that some of the work in Tennessee is being done by just saying, hey, we we want to make sure people are listening to us and preparing. And uh, we want to take a survey to see how many people are doing it so we can we can we can encourage it more. Unfortunately, from our past history, that has not been the motivation in many cases for gathering information on the part of the uh, of the system. So I think that it would be well taken by families to be concerned with this. I would think that it would cause people, if there is that much interest and it it is somewhat negative from the standpoint of our personal freedoms, I would think that the wise thing for families to do is to take this as a, as a, a maybe a red flag that says, hey guys, if it's that much of a concern and it could be a negative issue, it might be something that people need to consider really getting serious about getting themselves prepared. Well, that's my next point is that government has always made fun of being prepared because they want you dependent. Uh, unless you're in Switzerland where they've got their head screwed on straight. They say, have a year of food, have firearms, know how to use them. Uh, that's because Switzerland wants to be sovereign and secure. And then expanding on that, now the feds, as you know, the last few years do have uh, billboards up. They are saying have some storable food. But I think that's just so when things collapse, they can say, oh, see, we warned you, knowing most people really aren't getting prepared. But, I mean, look at all the stuff that's happening. Everything we talked about years ago is coming true. It's just this is real insurance. You can't believe in paper insurance. You can't believe in a paper dollar the way this world's going. You've got to believe in friends and family your relationship with God, and then physically, food, water, firearms, uh, and, and property. And look, I've moved to the country. I've got a well. I'm putting in the solar. Uh, I got a garden. I mean, I, I know what's coming, the second Great Depression. And uh, But then there's the issue. My wife says, well, what do we do? We're here in the country. People know we've got food. The government could come do something. And I'm like, listen, they're criminals. 
I'm not going to be in the worst position of having nothing and then, well, nobody will want me because I have nothing. I've got to be ready. Just because, and of course, the answer is then have some of it hidden off site. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's what I've done. I've got my stuff spread out so much. Good luck. And then, well, what if the government demands it? These are criminals. They can't take all our food. They can't take all our guns. Some people say, well, I'm not going to buy a gun. They might confiscate it. Because they might want to confiscate it is why you need it. It shows how important a gun and food is when you go into a situation like this. It'd be like, well, the government of this steamship is trying to confiscate anybody that has life rafts in their rooms. And it's like, well, since you want it, I'm not going to hide my life raft you know, that's, that's in the closet that isn't blown up. So since you're asking for it, here, go ahead and have it. It's your life raft. It's not theirs. And so you don't not have a life raft because the government might try to come take it. Do you see my point? It's like people are saying, I don't want to have kids. The world's just too bad. Well, we wouldn't be here if our ancestors had that same attitude. You went through a lot more than we're going through physically, I will assure you. You know, it's like, I don't want to have kids. They could die in a car wreck. I mean, it, it, it's this total give up on society attitude. I know you've heard it before. Well, I don't want storable food because the government will find out. If the government's that criminal, you better well have some storable food. Uh, do you see my point, Steve? I know I'm ranting. Oh, abso abso absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, what we try and do, uh, we, we know that a lot of people look at people like us, folks like us, and say, boy, they're half a bubble off with one oar in the water, a brick shy of a load and a taco short of a blue plate special because they're, they're into this right wing radical stuff. This, uh, all that this, this news article and these events in Tennessee are showing us is that we become more and more responsible for our own freedoms. Food is freedom, my friends. And uh, however you want to look at this, it is alarming that they came and asked. But the answer that they got was, we keep no records. And besides, if we did keep records, they're none of your business. Well, that's why eFoods from the very beginning has been very, very careful. Steve, stay there. Finish up on the other side and then talk about ways to protect your food and how long it lasts. Then Bob Chapman's coming up with a blitz of news. But eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. They have their Christmas and holiday specials right there. eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. All right, we've got an insane news blitz coming up in T-minus eight minutes when Bob Chapman joins us. You're going to want to stay with us. I'm going to run down just crazy news breaking left and right, get his quick take on it, get some economic breakdown, and then take your calls. But I wanted to get Steve Shank on because our phones are exploding asking you know, what's happening in Tennessee, and then, of course, obviously being the biggest storable foods uh, and most reliable in the country, eFoodsDirect.com, uh, the J. Michael Stevens Group, they got just massive phone calls about it. Uh, and uh, it's just just unbelievable to see how crazy things are getting. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have firearms and you don't know how to use them, you're crazy. And if you don't, and if you don't get basic training for them and store them right, you're crazy as well. Uh, and I'm not trying to lecture you here, but this is all common sense. The system wants us domesticated. And in every case, from Stalin to Pol Pot, right through, they use food as a weapon. Henry Kissinger said they'd use food as a weapon. In State Department Memorandum 200, the UN said it in 96 at their World Food Conference. That's why they're trying to shut down family farms and ranches. But look, America's fighting back. Here's the Hill today. I meant to get to this earlier with Steve. Farm dust bill approved in the House. The legislation is needed, H.R. 1633, because any dust, including hay, is considered a toxic waste, $10,000 fines. It passed 268 to 150. Now, that's the EPA shutting down most of our power plants now that aren't General Electric owned. This is a military economic attack on us by the bankers. They don't like the wealth of this country. They want to consolidate it. They want you under their control. Defeat them. Grow gardens. So what if the cops come and say you can't and they have to inspect it uh, in, in areas of Oklahoma and Michigan? They're crazy authoritarians and they need to be confronted. And, and somebody wants to know about your food, they can go to Hades. And at a certain point, ladies and gentlemen, look, I got guns and I got food and you're not getting them. It's, at a certain point, you got to say, I'm manned up and that's the end of it. Now go ahead and try it. You just can't live your whole life groveling. It invites these wolves. Now, side issue, I'm ranting and I, I've got to get you back up soon for a full hour, Steve, to talk everything food because I'm hearing food ads everywhere. All these fly-by-night companies I've never heard of. 
Uh, it's obviously people are finally waking up. I hope they go to eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex for those specials. I hope they give you guys a call, but you're not here for that today. And I said we wouldn't go there, but I can't help it. I believe in this, so I can't shut up. Uh, but 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 briefly, in 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 uh, we're even out of time. I'm gonna I got Bob Chapman holding. He's great. He's awesome. He's a sweetheart. Uh, I'll get his take after you leave. Stay there. We'll do two more minutes on the other side, but get started now. What do you recommend you do? Because I know you've, you've given advice for years on the food. If things do break down, it's not the government you're going to have to worry about probably. It's going to be thieves looking for it. What do you do with the food? Well, very simply, you should try and keep it in a secured area If, you, in terms of temperature and storage, that type of thing. Keep your food as as comfortable as you are, but uh, be very careful. Uh, treat it like it is your wealth. It is your life. So don't be talking about it a great deal. Encourage your friends and family to, uh, to uh, store their own. But the best attitude that I can, I can give you is that food is your greatest dependency and the way that you maintain your freedom. Food is freedom right now. So what you have to do is look at it from the standpoint if you don't want to take a totally negative attitude toward the government and the possible confiscation and things, if you just want to be reasonable and say, look, it's my personal responsibility to care for those I love. It's also, as an American, my patriotic responsibility to take care of my family so that the... I'll the tell you what, stay there, stay there. Function. Stay and there and finish your statement, and we'll go right to Bob Chapman. Bob holding there at internationalforecaster.com. Folks can give uh, eFoods Direct a call and ask any questions, get brochures, 800-876-0871, 800-876-0871, or eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. Now is the time to get ready. Okay, it's the Friday edition, and we've been so jam-packed with news and guests, I haven't taken calls. But I've gotten better lately getting to some calls some days, because uh, I want to take them. Uh, but we will next week, absolutely, Jaron. I know we've got a lot of big guests, and now Ron Paul says he's coming on Tuesday. But we're going to not get too many guests next week, at least an hour or two a day, because I want to hear from you while all this is happening, because I do hear from you in the comments, the emails, and everything else that's happening. Uh, there is so much crazy news here that we're going to get to. It's all just off the charts that we're going to be breaking down, um, and we're going to get Bob Chapman's take on it. And you know what? Take some financial questions for Bob Chapman. Specific questions for Bob Chapman, 800 259 800 259 But going back to Steve Shank, and again, I had the idea to get him on today because we were getting calls, they were getting calls. Because the feds have gotten GPS everybody's doors. They've got executive orders about food confiscation, shutdown of media in an emergency. But now they're testing the takeover of the media for the first time ever last month. Uh, what, the 9th of November. Uh, they are now manning the FEMA camps. And we got the FEMA documents. You can call Kellogg, Brown, and Root. And they're now getting companies set up to within 72 hours notice when they pull the trigger, man camps all over the U.S. for civil emergencies, environmental, whatever. The Pentagon's hiring internment specialists. They're training everybody for urban warfare and riot control. Look at what's happening in Europe. And, and, and people, even as this is happening, can't believe it's happening. By admitting it's happening and saying it's wrong, people will be aware of it and say no, and know it's staged as the next phase happens. Look, I went to urban warfare drills 13, 14 years ago and knew this was coming. And I knew it'd take them a while. This is a long-term strategic takeover. The globalists have the country, but they really want to transform it. And when I witnessed military training to confiscate our guns, round up citizens, search our houses... And since then, now it's admitted. 